Here in New York City, we have the African burial ground, you know, something that was found in the early 1990s. And it's significant because it's right down in the Wall Street area. And we know that New York City, outside of places like Charleston, South Carolina, is one of the big importers of African people who became slaves in this country. And so there was an honest conversation about it. I do agree with you all that there has to be a conversation about it um, where we are actually educating people. Um, do I want to hold on to, for example, Christopher Columbus, everything? I think that Christopher Columbus committed genocide. I'm going to be really honest with you all. That's my perspective. He did. You know, um, but at the same time, I worked at James Madison University as a visiting professor a year ago, and w I went to James Madison's plantation. I actually thought it was invaluable for me to have that experience. I've been to plantations in this country, in the West Indies, et cetera, because I do think we need to understand what happened. I agree with you all there. Um, but I think that, you know, I can't be mad at folks that want to tear it down, you know, but I think that in tearing it down, we still have to have the conversation because just because you get rid of the symbols of racism doesn't mean that you're getting rid of racism. Right, right. Uh, that's, that's, wow. Well, let me share a comment with you. You've already started tickling our, our chat line here, and, and uh, Thin Bad's also going to give out the call-out number in just a second, but right off the chat line, we got a chat, uh, a message from Gina from Atlanta, and Gina says that black people's money paid for the statues that glorified those that hated us, raped us, murdered us, and did their best to keep us in slavery. Take those down, put them in storage. History won't change. Teach the truth and point out the monuments that remind of what happened to us and Native Americans. And that's from Gina from Atlanta. I, I mean, I agree with her because I, I don't know if which one of you brothers said it, but a lot of folks do feel like these statues and monuments are middle fingers at black people. I mean, I certainly have felt that way where I've been in certain places. I'm like, look at this thing. If the Confederacy was about, and again, my people are from the South. We're from South Carolina. I'm just one generation removed. But some of it feels like just a kind of a middle finger when you still have things named after the name after the word plantation, when it's Confederate this, when it's Jefferson Davis that. I mean, it's just, it's just blatantly disrespectful to black people. And so I understand <coughs> why many of us wanted to go. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, I, it, I can see, like you, I can see both sides as well. And this, this whole, the, the re-education idea um, is is interesting is interesting and, and you would hope something like that would happen you know you as I think back to the history books that I had you know the pilgrims always sounded so pleasant you know they were they were set they were settlers you know exactly. as, if, as if the ground exactly. was unsettled as if everything was unsettled already <laughs> you know they they were settlers and you know right I was like what the hell is that I mean I never asked that question then but now as, as, as you know, when you get old I'm like no I mean just the way that you know, we were kind of uh, lulled into right. into some of this uh, uh, to, to understanding this this way. Uh, you know, the whole Christopher Columbus piece. You know, same thing, um, and, and just what was left out and, and how horrible. Um, you know, uh, you know, as much as they talked about terrorism, you know, after 9/11, and that was horrific. You know, there was a whole lot of terrorism that happened right here on this ground. That's right. Well, before 9-11. And they need to tell that story. They need to, you know, that, that story needs to be told uh, as ugly and as painful as it is. Uh, and to be able to come through that and, and to be something else. But as long as they, you know, folks are unwilling to have that conversation and to have that discussion, um, you know, we're, we're stymied. Uh, we're, we, we'll never get to where it is uh, that they had hoped that <laughs> the, what they put in their words, as Martin Luther King said, you know, be true to what you say on paper. That's right. Uh, um, uh, and they were true uh, with, with that three-fifths piece, but, I mean, just the whole greater, the grander idea. The idea of America has always been so much better than, than, than what we've seen as, as people of color in America. You know, you're absolutely right, Brother Phil. And I mean, when we think about it, if we just focus on our fraternity for a second, and it's, so shout out to the whole Divine Nine, but I am biased, you know, the boys, Paul Robeson, Thurgood Marshall, Dr. King, you know, that's been the constant quest of folks, you know, tell the truth, tell the whole truth about what has happened here. And I think that, you know, what's been p powerful to me, I've been part of many protests and rallies here in New York City where I'm based. This, I've never, you know, we have not seen this amount of white sisters and brothers since the civil rights era you know, actually actively participating in the movement and talking about white supremacy, talking about white privilege, talking about the miseducation that they've gotten. Because I've said, I've said for years on college campuses in corporate America and communities, nonprofits, that racism, white supremacy affects white folks as much as it affects people of color. You're being miseducated as well. 
And so this is why we see this huge uptick and people wanting to read books by black writers. I mean, I've written 14 books. This, I'm, my new book is When We Free the World that just came out. I've never had so many people ask me for suggestions on what to read. I'm not, and I'm certainly not only recommending my own book, I'm sure. recommending tons of writers. And it, it says that there's a kind of deep awakening because I do believe that when uh, Trump got into power, let's keep in mind that half the country split. Half the country did not vote for this man. And I'm talking about the majority of white sisters and brothers. And so they also have, it's a kind of a trauma that they've also been experiencing, which I believe has led to this awakening around race and racism and white supremacy in a way that I, I couldn't have imagined in my lifetime, not in my lifetime. And so even they are out there talking about tear down the statues and the minds. We, we need to be clear, sure. it's not just black folks that are out here saying these things, you know. But again, I want us to focus on the fact that, as you said, there has to be a mass re-education because that's the problem. I was just watching a clip earlier today and people can Google this on YouTube with Richard Pryor and a TV show host from the 1970s named Bill Boggs. And Richard Pryor is talking about racism. And it's only four minutes, but it's, it's really invaluable because he's talking about how people are purposely separated because someone is greedy and they just want power and they want to pit it against each other. And I think, you know, the stuff around the statues and monuments is an important conversation to have. But the deeper conversation is who has power, as Dr. King was talking about at the end of his life, and who doesn't have power, and why, why is it like this, and what are we going to do to change it? And I really have, think it has to come back to how we're educated. Do we actually know ourselves, and do we actually really know the whole history of this country? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, they, they don't, you know, and, they, and clearly they don't know. Everyone, they don't know the whole history uh, of the country. As, as I'm looking now, you know, back and forth, as you, you, you talked about that clip with Richard Pryor, who, you know, who always was able to give you, um, you know, you, you laughed, but you went away from it. Anytime you listen to Richard Pryor, you go away carrying that stuff with you. That's right. Um, um, and those, and that's the, uh, you know, it's like, wow, you know, he was, he was right on point. And he had a way of kind of holding the mirror up uh, to, to, to society as a whole. And, um, you know, we've got a, I've got a, a a caller coming in, coming in now. Let me see what he's got to say. Chief, go ahead. Let me see if I can get this caller up. Okay. Well, you know, while we're waiting on the caller, um, Kevin, we, you know, one of the things that, that I just been hearing and, and also ironically, I just got a, a text, um, about your comments and Phil from Maryland wanted to know how do we go about mass education? you know, really getting that message across that, you know, this is what the Confederacy represented. This is what it did. This is how it hurt people. You know, you know the whole sordid thing that the Confederacy was. So what are your recommendations? Well, you know, that's a great question. And what I want to say to folks is let's not just focus on the South. You know, I think that's unfair sure. to folks from the South. You know, I think, as Malcolm X famously said, the South is south of the Canadian border. You know, well, yeah, and so right. I want to focus on the entire country, you know, and I think the entire country needs to be re-educated. Um, and certainly, do, I mean, do Confederate symbols bother me? Yeah, but I live in New York City where Eric Garner was choked hold to death a few years before uh, George Floyd was kneed to death. I've been involved in, 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 in anti-racial profiling work in New York City in the North, so-called progressive New York City for many years. And so I think, you know, the re-education has to happen across the board. It needs to happen in the school system, public and private schools. It needs to happen at the collegiate level if folks go to college. I feel it needs to happen in religious institutions. I feel like it has, has to happen in corporate America. And you see these conversations happening, and it's not enough. we got to say this. It's not enough for folks to make statements of apology, to say that they support Black Lives Matter. You know, I've gotten so many calls from white brothers and sisters who are well-meaning who say, you know, Kevin, I'm just checking in. Is there anything I can do? I appreciate it as a human being. But what we really need to do, your families, are you having these conversations? And it can't just be in this moment. You know, we need to understand that the civil rights movement went on from 1955, the heart of it, to 1968. That was 13 years. You know what I'm saying? Right. And we're talking about just a couple of months. And so my hope is that this is not just some passing fad. People are out there for a little while, and then it's over. You know, this has to become something that's going to change. You know, people were saying to me, you know, one interview, brothers, that, uh, you know, well, you know, can things really change? I was like, because of the civil rights movement, my mother was born, her birth certificate in South Carolina said that she was mm -hmm. colored. It said that, you know, she was able to have to go in certain spaces that were colors only, and there was mm -hmm. places for whites only. But because of the movement, those things, those symbols of racism were taken down and removed. But it was a sustained movement, the energy of the people. And that's what needs to happen now. And that's what I'm really, 
uh, encouraging folks like, well, let's think about the long term of how this is going to change. It's going to have to be about changing how people are educated and what they actually think about. I'm not trying to control people's minds, but I do believe that we have to broaden people's thinking out because a lot of sure. times how we're taught, how what we're thinking is very narrow. And, 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 and honestly, it's done a disservice to people in this country for the most part. Yeah, and, that, and that's a great point. And, and you know, it's ironic that you said that because um, you, you don't think about the North, but you had some of the same levels of discrimination and, and, and horrible interaction north of, of the Mason Diction as you did uh, below the Mason Diction. That's a great point. I think, uh, I think Thinbat has our caller ready to go. Thinbat. Yeah, we've got, got Brian right now. I couldn't plan this. This just happened. He happens to know something about black and gold, too. Uh -oh. Okay, I love uh -oh. it. <laughs> Brian, you there? <laughs> Let's see. Where is he? Where is he? Brian, 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 Brian. Are you there, Brian? Well, we'll give we'll give them a minute to, yeah. to to get Brian together. But you know, one of the things that that I've been hearing also, Kevin, is that you have a. Yeah. It's almost like a a um, what's the word a denial complex going on because I know initially when we were hearing particularly with Mississippi for example uh, people were talking about the proud heritage of of the Confederacy and and all these things and you even heard the guy in D.C. talking about you know what what a proud heritage I'm paraphrasing now um, the Confederacy was and and you know it's ironic when we talk about miseducation. Uh, it, you can tell there's a miseducation on that side as well because anyone that doesn't understand or recognize that the Confederacy represented a horrible period of time, particularly for African Americans, and the Confederate fighters were actually fighting against the United States. And, and I don't think people seem to understand that in their rush to talk about patriotism and history, which I find very ironic. Let me see. Brian, are you there? I am. I am. What's happening? What's happening, brothers? Okay, Brian, how are you, sir? Hey, brother. Beautiful. 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 I'm going to circle back to the, the monuments, and I, I love your, your title, uh, historical or disgrace. And to me, they can be both. Uh, I, I don't mind. I'm in Richmond, where they just took Stonewall Jackson uh, statue down. Right. And people were out there singing, they were singing, na, 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 hey, 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 goodbye. And people were just hyped. I would buy, you know, they were I don't mind the money in the same year. As long as we educate people on who those people really were. You know, you, you were talking about re-education or re-educating. That's been a common thing throughout your show tonight. So, you know, I, I, I was a school counselor for 18 years. And the history, and y'all know this, the history books don't tell the true story of who these people are. They don't tell the true story of who Lee was, who Stonewall Jackson was. And dudes were vicious. I mean, they're vicious like the friend. So put that actually, what, who they really are in the history book and what they did, put what Christopher Columbus did in the history book. So let people really know who those people are, and then we look at those statues, we'll know, you know, what they're really about, as opposed to making them these godlike figures. So we educate. Right. Absolutely. But it has it has to start in school. I I agree. I completely agree. And thank you, our, our fraternity brother. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I I'm just happy, brothers. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Buy it all day, you know what I mean? Um it, it, it's um, it's it's a profound space, and it's like you know Malcolm X also said, besides the quote about South and South the Canadian borders, that history is a people's memory, and without it, we're demoted to the lower animals. History is a people's memory, and without it, we're demoted to the lower animals. Wow. And we're we're in a very historic time, obviously a profoundly historic time in American history, and people are confronting that history and confronting what they've been taught. You know, uh, I you know there's a Daily News article that myself and some other writers are quoted in here in New York, New York Daily News where there's record numbers of black books being sold right now. It's, it's unbelievable what's happening, you know, because people are realizing, I don't know any of this stuff. I don't know where this came from. 
And I think, again, as Dave Chappelle talked about in his special, which people need to check out, 8, 846, which is the exact amount of time.